Your enemies try to make you the scapegoat for all of their problems and all of their shortcomings. It has backfired on the enemy. Somebody put down in the comment section below, it backfired. Listen to me right now, brothers and sisters. This video is going to be absolutely powerful. I'm going to give you insight on the enemy's mindset. They tried to make you the scapegoat. They tried to make you the problem. They tried to make you the big picture of all of their shortcomings, brothers and sisters, and God exposed the enemy. All of your enemies have been exposed. I'm going to show you today just how you have rose above all of the lies and smear campaigns and all of the uh, scapegoating tactics that the enemies used against you. I'm going to break it down for you. You're going to get a powerful message, brothers and sisters. Listen to me right now. If you are being scapegoated by the enemy right now, what you should do is separate yourself. Somebody put down in the comment section below, separate from the enemy, mm, separate. You got to separate from the enemy. Why? Some people say, why must you separate? The reason you should separate from this enemy is because when you exit yourself from the equation, when you exclude yourself from the equation, the enemy will be exposed for who they really are. Amen. See, Think about it like this. When you were chasing your dreams and the enemy were chasing their dreams, they were falling short of their dreams. You were right next to them. If you take yourself out of the equation and allow the enemy to do what they want to do, they are going to fall short, brothers and sisters, and you are going to take off and elevate. So the first thing that you should do is separate yourself from the enemy. Amen. I mean that for relationships. I mean that for friendships, whatever the case may be, separate yourself and we will see who will win and who will lose. And what you're going to find out when you separate yourself is you will win, brothers and sisters. Somebody put down in the comment section below, I'm a winner. Somebody put that down there right now. Now, once you separate yourself, you're going to begin to see the psychology and the mindset between the enemy and something that you're going to find that these enemies suffer from is something called displaced aggression. Somebody put down displaced aggression. Put that down there in the chat right now. Put that down there in the comment section below. Put down my enemies suffer from displaced aggression. Some people will say, Christian Life Coach, what is displaced aggression? I'm going to go ahead and show you right now. See, Displaced aggression, according to research, is it occurs when an animal or human is fearful or agitated by external stimuli, a provocation or perception, but is unable or unwilling to direct their aggression towards the stimulus. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to give you an example right now. You may be in a relationship with a narcissist, right? They get angry at the job. They're angry at their boss. And instead of them putting that anger towards their boss, they bring it home to you. If you have been through that right now, hit the like button right now. If you've been through displaced aggression from the enemy where you've been blamed by family members for their shortcomings, they've been upset with the world. But instead of them taking it out on people in the world who they're actually mad at, the, the actual object, they begin to take it out on you. If you've ever... Had an enemy do this to you, hit that like button right now because I know I have. So many people try to blame us, amen, because we carry the light, brothers and sisters. And something that I'm going to show you right now, all right, is the light that you carry will make you a target, all right? I'm going to give you this personal testimony, right? I was on social media and it was a little while back and when I first ran into some enemies who suffered from this condition, I began to see that there were people, there was a post about Christ, right? Passing away, dying on the cross, all the suffering that he's uh, been through. And there were people that was laughing, right? And what I began to see, the Holy Spirit laid it on me. The Holy Spirit told me that there's people that want to relive that moment. Oh man, that's powerful. Brothers and sisters, we are in a serious spiritual battle right now where there are people right now in this world, the Antichrist spirit right now in this world, want to relive that moment of Christ dying on the cross. In their mind, the job wasn't done yet. So it upset me to see people laughing at Christ. But the Holy Spirit laid it on me. The Most High told me, listen, that these people have the condition of displaced aggression. They want to hurt Christ. They want to hurt the most high. They can't get to the most high. So who are they going to attack? The body 
of Christ. Somebody put down in the comment section below the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ, brothers and sisters. That's why you're a target. That's why demonic forces, that's why witches and warlocks are trying to attack me and you day and night, brothers and sisters, because they can't get to the most high God. So who can they get to? The physical form, the physical body, me and you. We are the closest thing to Christ, brothers and sisters. Why? Because we carry the light according to Matthew. All right. Now I'm going to take you to scripture and inside of the scripture, brothers and sisters, I'm going to show you proof that Saul also had this condition called displaced aggression. All right. Saul also wanted to make David the scapegoat. OK, and I'm going to show you proof of that, of this message here, and it's going to give you an understanding more of this condition. All right. Um, let's go to uh, 1 Samuel 18. Six. Okay. And it says this, and it came to pass as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the woman came out of the city of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy and with instruments of music. And the woman answered one another as they played and said, Saul have slain his thousands and David his ten thousand. Uh oh. The words of that woman angered Saul, brothers and sisters. Okay. By her singing of praise, uplifting Saul and David, but saw the thought of David inside of Saul's mind being having more bodies, right? Having more things than Saul, it angered him. Now let's keep going. Let's see the actions of Saul, let's check it out. And it says this, and Saul was very rough, which means Saul was very angry, saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David 10,000s, and to me, they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul, I, David, from that day and forward, brothers and sisters, Saul had an evil eye towards David from that day forward. In other words, Saul's inside of Saul's mind, he made David the enemy based off of what the woman was saying. David didn't even say it. Oh, man, this is powerful. All the likes should be up in this video right now. David didn't even say, I'm the one who slayed 10,000. Amen. It was the woman who sung the praise. But uh, Saul had a reprobate mind. He was so jealous of David to where it didn't matter to him, to where he created this reality inside of his mind. OK, that David was the enemy. Brothers and sisters, this is a lesson for you. A lot of your enemies are like this. Amen. Understand that it happens off conversation. Oh, man, this is powerful. Do you know how many enemies right now feel the same way, just like Saul, based off my ministry, based off me right now? I had brothers and sisters that mentioned my name to other people's channels, brothers and sisters, and I became an enemy towards them. Listen, they had an evil eye towards your brother. I'm going to say that again. The people on YouTube on here right now was dropping my name on these other channels and it created jealousy towards the enemies who quote unquote had more subscribers to me, who quote unquote had more people following them. But it didn't matter, brothers and sisters. It was the anointing that I carried. It was based off conversation. And I want you to know something about your life, brothers and sisters, based off conversation and based off people praising you and uplifting you, it is going to create jealousy inside of these enemies heart. Now, let's see how far Saul took it. And it says this. And saw I, David, from that day and forward, and it came to pass on tomorrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul and he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played with his hand as at other times. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. So Saul had a, he had a, um, he had a weapon. All right. And Saul cast the javelin for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice and Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is with you. Somebody put down in the comment section below, the Lord is with me. 
Oh my goodness gracious, the devil had a plot, but God had a plan. Saul had a plot to destroy David, but God had a plan. God warned David and David was able to escape. And Saul had enough sense to know that when he tried to slay David, that the presence of the Lord was with David. Why? Because Saul had destroyed people this very same way and it worked. It prospered. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know something right now. The enemy's witchcraft worked on the enemy. The enemy's witchcraft worked on people who wasn't of the most high God. But when they put those word spells and word curses against your life, it didn't work. The most high is truly blessing you. The most high is truly protecting you. Somebody put down in the comment section below. The most high God is my protection. Somebody put that down there right now. And it says this. It says, and Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. Therefore, Saul removed him from him and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways. And the Lord was with him. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. Brothers and sisters, your enemies fear you. They are very afraid of you. They are afraid of the power of God. They are afraid of the anointing of the Lord that has been placed inside of your life. I tell you this on, all the time. It's not on you. It's in you. And this is what makes the enemy afraid. Your angels are extremely powerful. They are protecting you, brothers and sisters. You have the protection from the angels of the Lord that's standing guard for your life, brothers and sisters. There is no way that this enemy can defeat you. There is no way that these enemies can put lies across your name and God won't vindicate you. God will vindicate you every single time. All of the smear campaigns won't work. Everything that this enemy will try will backfire against your enemies. Amen. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will continue to protect you, brothers and sisters. Stand firm. They cannot continue to make you the scapegoat because God has made you the anointed one and the appointed one. You are the chosen one.